Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book Longitude, the true story of a lone genius who solved the greatest scientific problem of his time. In this era, practically no matter where you are and where you are going, as long as you click on the map on your phone, you can see at a glance how far you are from your destination, where you will pass, and what kind of transportation you can take. It is unlikely that you will get lost. All that thanks to satellite navigation. However, how did people navigate before satellites were invented? It would be easier on land as there were buildings for reference, but how did people position and navigate when the only available references were the sun, the moon, and stars? If positioning and navigation were inaccurate, what troubles would it bring to sailing? Who was the person who solved this problem? You can find answers to all those questions in Longitude the book we will unlock in detail today. Longitude tells of a legendary history of the exploration of the Earth's longitude. This popular science book not only integrates the history of astronomy, navigation, and watchmaking, but also tells a fascinating tale. The book made the New York Times bestseller list as soon as it was first published in 1995. Owing to its dramatic plots, Longitude has been adapted into documentaries, TV series, and a movie. Longitude has been translated into 30 languages and is hailed by readers as a gem of literature that is not just a novel, but more than a novel. Longitude is the first renowned work by the acclaimed American science writer Deva Sobel. Besides Longitude, Sobel has also published best-selling popular science works such as Galileo's Daughter and the Planets, which have won her awards one after another. Before Longitude was published, it was rejected by more than 10 publishing houses, but Sobel didn't give up and insisted on telling this story to the world. Next, we will unlock this book in three parts. First, the unknown longitude of vast seas. Second, the confluence of absurdity and wisdom. Third, the birth and widespread adoption of the chronometer. When sailors need to determine their position and navigate the sea, they refer to the latitude and longitude of the ship. Latitude is easy to measure as its zero-degree position which is the equator is defined by natural laws. Experienced sailors are able to accurately determine their latitude based on the length of day, the height from the horizon of the sun or common stars, such as Polaris. The zero degree of longitude, which is the prime meridian of London is artificially defined and there is no natural law to follow. In fact, longitude is determined by relative time. The Earth rotates once in 24 hours, exactly 360 degrees, so it makes 1 24th the rotation per hour, or 15 degrees. Every one hour difference in time is every 15 degree difference in longitude. Today, just randomly find two watches or a watch featuring several time zones and we can easily tell the difference in longitude. However, Back in the 15th and even 18th centuries, that was not possible even with the pendulum clock. Turbulence on the ship, temperature, air pressure and changes in the Earth's gravity affect the accuracy of the watch. The slightest difference in measuring time would inevitably lead to a thousand miles of deviation. Therefore, despite having the best charts and compasses, failure to determine longitude made sailing a huge adventure and gamble. No matter how much experience they had, captains often got lost at sea, causing innumerable shipwrecks. For instance, on October 22, 1707, an English fleet led by Admiral Sir Cloudesley Shovel defeated a French fleet but encountered heavy fog for 12 days on their way back, which led them to incorrectly determine their longitude. The fleet initially planned on heading to the Brittany Peninsula, but ended up in the Sicily Isles. The fleet then strayed into waters with dense reef, and eventually the whole army perished. Nearly 2,000 soldiers were buried at the bottom of the sea. In addition to the shipwreck, sailors often died of the terrible disease scurvy, which is the result of a severe lack of vitamin C. At that time, food storage options on ships were limited, so fresh fruits and vegetables could not be kept for a long time. Sailors thus had a higher chance of getting scurvy.